Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes to us from Jason F. And Jason Ferguson, his call sign is KN6UIZ. And he has a question about something that's in the instructions for a very old beam antenna. Now, some of these beam antennas, the Aggies, have been on the market unchanged for more than 50 years. And this is one of those. This is, I think, the A3. Um, and it shows in here how the connections are supposed to be made. There's no provision in here for an unun, although you could certainly do that. This feed right here is a uh, balanced feed. So we're feeding that with unbalanced. And what it says to do, here I'll show it to you under the overhead camera. What this thing says to do, this is the, the boom of the antenna. This is the driven element over here, okay? And the coax is coming in here with the braid, six inches over to here, and the center conductor six inches over to here, which looks like this. Okay, just gonna back out a little bit. I did this just to see if I could do this. First of all, when this was manufactured, coaxial cable was available to the radio amateur in sizes um, RG8U, uh, which is a big, thick, 0.405-inch thick cable. Uh, also then, RG58, this is RG58, and RG213. And they're all constructed the same way. And let me show you what that is. So we can get this down here. Get this out of here. These are all constructed with a center conductor, Okay, with some insulating material and braid on the outside. Now, modern coaxes, uh, the RG8X is similar to this, but it has uh, a much better coverage. This old RG58, uh, which is, I mean, it works, but it's not very good coax, does not provide 100% coverage of the braid, so you can get a little bit of signal leakage in and out. Now, um, this is one, I'm going to back out here. This is one right here where just to make sure I could still do this, I took a piece of RG58. Now, if you try this with LMR400, for example, um, this is LMR400. And you'll note that although there is braid and a lot of it there's also in here uh, a aluminum covering that's actually got tape on the inside of it it's like a double-sided tape and then there's the foam and then there's the interior connection so you could not do this with this type of cable without slitting that down and removing all that inside stuff Okay, and you'll notice how much thicker this braid is here. LMR 400 is a very high quality coax. But all the coaxes back in the day that, you know, when I first got into ham radio, the ham radio coaxes uh, were like this. This is RG58. And I actually made one of these uh, feeds here uh, that has the center conductor that they want uh, wanted attached to a little uh, loop right there and on either side of these. So let me how, show you how to do this. It may take two or three tries because it's real easy to cut through the braid. Let's see, the first step, let's just say we're going to do it here. Okay, the first step, knife, be careful, we're going to cut here more by pressing 
then by dragging across and we'll speed this up so it doesn't take forever see this right here we have actually split through the braid we do not want to cut the copper underneath so we've got to go all the way around using your best knife etiquette this is not a terribly sharp blade it doesn't mean it won't cut because it sure will now wouldn't it be nice if you could just pull this thing off this extra and no you can't do that now from here what we're going to do is we're going to slice just the outer braid and if that's not enough we'll slice it some more okay here what we're doing is we're seeing that we're we're taking the rubber cover we don't want to cut the copper so that takes you know maybe pulling it until it you know just not quite through and then pulling it out okay now we've got this we note the copper braid and the internal conductor now this is the trick this is an old ham trick kind of scoot the braid back a little bit come down here this is all braided and just kind of move the braids out of the way okay until you get to this point right here and what we're going to do is get a tool in there I'm just going to use the knife blade because that will actually work and then we start pulling just loosen this up Are you missing the camera? There we go. loosen this up like this and pull the, the inner conductor out like this loosen it up again pull the inner conductor out and voila you have your grounded side and the inner side of the coil and you can solder this to a little uh, round thing so you can put it on the antenna same over here that's how you do it so the secret is one try not to cut the braid as much as you can number two just kind of move the braid apart see the braid isn't isn't very wonderful the braid isn't very wonderful on this coax it's rg58 i got this from radio shack my very first station used RG8X, so it does work. Um, but nowadays I wouldn't use it because there's so many better alternatives. But what we did there, if you look now over at his old antenna, let me show you the coax here in pink. This is the coax coming underneath the boom and then being split into two parts. Okay, now these are equal in length. This is drawn in perspective. And they go in here and are connected to this adapter right here. This is an impedance adapter. Okay, and in there. And then that way you've got your connection. Now again, you can only do this, unlike RG58, um, I think RG59, not RG59, no, you don't want to use that. RG8X is very similar to this. R8, R, um, RG8U, which is the thicker one. And now this won't work very well with something like LMR4. 
400 because it's a better coax and it has uh, trying to get that that uh, aluminum shield off of here is a real exercise in frustration so there you go so the antenna he's using is an old high gain three element 20 meter Yagi on top of his house and he's going to use RG213 in the RG213 you will be able to do that little thing that I told you about and I haven't used this trick in a very very long time because I've always done things a little differently but uh, it does work now note that I kind of chewed up the coax right here but there's still plenty of copper in that particular point and then of course the braid here uh, can be stretched but not very much there you go so there you have it how to do that funny little thing with coax cables I hope that helps and maybe you'll find yourself in a position like that too for example if you make a dipole and you put a big center insulator in here this is one way to get the the feed up to the dipole so that it doesn't uh, you know you don't end up with something convoluted but uh, this is not the strongest from a physical point of view so you're still going to want to put something around your coax and hold it to the antenna so we're not putting physical stress on that there you go if you like this channel please subscribe click like uh, click the bell uh, also, uh, let other people know about it. Uh, send a video or two around. I've got over a thousand videos up on various topics on ham radio. And about nine of those happen to have airplanes in them, but that's another story entirely. So, there you go. Until we next meet, 73.